with us and is being fertilized anyway right now as I speak because the words of my mouth is doing something. And we want the team to pray for the ministries that have been placed in us, that we may go forth according to the will of God in the capacity he has called us to in the vineyards we are located in and be fruitful and multiply because that's what was told in the garden to the plants. He spoke to trees. He spoke to the whole creation. Be fruitful. Don't just be fruitful, but then multiply. The word and brings two things into focus. Be fruitful and multiply. So what he's given you to do, we want to not just know he gave it to us. That's just like holding a seed in your hand and know you have it. But it doesn't do anything if it's not planted. We want to not just plant where one water and one plant and God gives increase, but we want to be fruitful and we want to multiply. And then we want our fruit to what? Remain. So we have more to learn, more as a part of this. We have Sunday where we will come to a conclusion. But even in ending today, we want to think on what God has given us as individuals. We're talking kingdom now. We're not talking church organization. We're not talking uh, church affiliation. We're not talking um, church membership per se here versus there. We're talking about the kingdom because we are all children of God in his kingdom. If he saved us and he did, if we're some that are not even saved yet, still to come in, there's purpose there. So they can't even come to him except he draw them. So faith come by hearing. We have to hear the word of God. And that we're not going into the threefold nature of man, but the only gate that leads to the spirit man is the ear gate. Of all the gates, it's the ear gate that leads to the spirit. So that is a very important gate, that ear gate. And Lady P has given you, uh, an illustration of the seed and so much in this one little picture you have the uh, uh um let me just put it out there because i'm talking to saints of god right now can anybody tell me what do you see when you see this picture the seed elder king you supposed to be up here right now yeah you you're good you're good <laughs> And, and I want to hear from you, and then I want to hear from our panelists. Look at it. If you have, if you need it, just raise your hand. Look at it, and one or two people, tell me what you see in this in this diagram of the seed. Yes, uh, Sister Barbara. Say that again. Thank you. And that's the seed. Wow. And it has hearts to the seed. Let me read you just a couple of things in my notes here. I I don't, I, I saw what you saw, Sister Barbara. You know, so do you see what I see? Yes, I see what you see. I also see an ear. Wow. An ear? A seed? Why did you do it like that, Lord? He that has an ear, let him hear. Now, I have some seeds here. Corn seed. When you think of a corn kernel, you plant one corn kernel seed. Do you think you're going to get one kernel to grow? into a plant kernel, what do you get? A harvest, a stock? What's on the stock of corn? Oh, what, 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 what? Ears of what? Ears of corn. Wow, the best businessman 
is God. He invests. He get ears of corn. And I wonder why would you call it ears of corn? It says, I, I looked up, this is just from Googling. It, I said, why do we say the ear of corn or ears of corn? It says it comes from an ancient word, ahas. Ah, as is A H S, which means husk of corn. In English, sometimes the ear. It also refers to a cob or a pole. The ear is a spike part of the corn plant that contains kernels, which is more seeds. What goes into the ear is what goes into that spirit. What you see by, uh, uh, can stop at your uh, conscious, your 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 psychic part. If you look at the threefold nature man, um, what goes into your smell gate can stop right there at your imagination, your conscious. You have the five gates, but what goes into the ear that can go straight to your spirit. And it's amazing how the Lord says, "Except the a, a corn." is planted and died, which we heard today. Jesus described himself as being a corn, kernel, corn, kernel of corn that was planted and brought forth many brothers, right? That's his way from the beginning up until now and to the end. It should never be just you saved. It's, it doesn't stop because you got saved. When he saved you, that word in you should be operating like this kernel of corn. And when we speak the word or just live the word, because that life speaks volumes, it should be producing because it's going to go into the ear of somebody. So it's just amazing how he used the term ear. And when I look at ear, we know one plant, one water, and God give increase. You're not going to get to the new birth without hearing the word first. And when I look at this, you see that baby? You could pass it around if you need to make copies of this. Do you see the embryo? Like it's a barber saw. It looks just like the bean. Because we learned today the DNA is in the seed. Everything this baby needs when it's going to grow up is in there while it's in the shell. You heard about that shell, right? The mother's womb. Look how, do you see similarities? God is amazed. So he meant for us to multiply, to, to, to bring forth, to Bring forth fruit and multiply. Look at the ear. Look at the seed. Production comes from hearing first, like we're hearing today. Planting. New birth. Multiplication. You see, all three are similar. Not to mention, if you look at the tabernacle, which we're not going there. Elder King can come back later next year and bring out the ear, the tabernacle and the seed. <laughs> Amen. I, he just got a new assignment and I have the tabernacle here. It is laid out like that. And Sheila is also a witness about the ear. If you look at the way God had, he gave me that back when I was at, at Nina. Um, and Sheila was there in my class there. Uh, and I, it just, it just fell on me. I was talking to Bishop Richardson Sr. I was talking about the function of the ear because you had me teaching a missions class on on um, um, just giving the saints tools to reaching the deaf. And you don't have to know how to sign or be a, a, an interpreter. You learn enough signs to communicate your testimony, get them to the church where the interpreter would then do their job and they can get the word. Because even the deaf shall... All right, all right, all right. So he uses because every this we gotta reach the masses, amen. 
Amen. So when I was looking at the function of the ear and I turned, the Lord told me, turn it to the right. I turned it. And I happen to have the function of the ear right next to the diagram of the uh, uh, diagram of the tabernacle. And the Lord showed me outer inner. Ear has outer inner. And you have the collier of the ear, which is the most holy place. See, because you can hear, if you cut this flesh part off of your ear, you still hear flesh, lobe, outer courts. A lot of chatter, a lot goes on in outer courts. But the real function, where the spirit, where the functioning of what goes through, when we hear that sound, see, there's an ear in Matthew, and then there's another ear in Revelation, okay? Two different kind of ears right there. When you get that ear, first of all, that natural ear in Matthew, you can cut this off and you can still hear the word. When the word get in you and resonate and do what it can do in you and cause you to come forth as a new creature, ah, then when you hear, as in that Revelation ear, what the Spirit says to the church, you don't need these ears. The deaf can hear with that ear. Amen? We're talking spiritual. First natural, then spiritual. But notice the seed. Notice the ear. Notice the new birth. And notice on the same pattern of the tabernacle. Amen? Because God means for us to heal Israel. Ah, the Lord our God is one. Here and your soul shall live. Here and you can live while life is in the sea, right? Okay, now I want you to open up your bag and We can eat sunflower seeds. That's edible. We have seeds that um, later can make instruments with. That was the tamarind seed. We have the lima bean. We have the corn seed. We have the sunflower seed and um, the pinto bean. Mind you, I heard someone on our panel say the mustard seed is the smallest of the seeds. But it's not his size that the Lord want us to focus on. It is the capabilities that we need to notice. If you have faith, the size of a mustard. If you just have that, we're not going to harper on the size. We want to focus on what it's capable of bringing forth. Hi, y'all, And you've all been given a measure of what? Faith. And you'll be given a little mustard seed, too, as a keepsake to remind you that you have what it takes to bring forth by faith. Amen? Okay, so what are we going to do? Elder, our, our, our Elder King told us about the greenhouse. And you have in your bag a um, plastic Ziploc container, Ziploc bag, rather. And I would like for you to open it up. Uh, uh, could somebody let that evangelist call, uh, can you help me give them their bags? Can I say thank you? <laughs> you have not only your gift bag or your registration bag, but you have a gift because I just want to say thank you. <laughs> okay, the um bag on the end, Lady P, if you hold it up, I can tell you who to bring it to. That is Elder King's bag, and there's there's something in it for you, and I just want to say thank you, but I'm giving it to you now so you can take out your registration bag. Is he scared? <laughs> is he scared? <laughs> Dean, that's Dean's bag, and uh, Bishop Sanders have hers. That's just to say thank you. 
And you and before we go to our, our greenhouse, you can open it up because I want to talk about something that you have in here. Because you're gonna have to open it up anyway to get your experiment out. That is Pastor Paul, uh, um, Dr. Paul, that's Pastor Pease. I really want Pastor Pease to open up his bag like this. I really want y'all to see what he has. <laughs> Why are you scared? <laughs> Johnson, I hear you. He's scared to open it up, y'all. We all have our little kit, but let me see. I want y'all to see what Pastor P got. <laughs> it's in your registration bag. Yeah. It's plastic. Yeah, that's his. <laughs> do y'all know what that is pistachios because he is not going to do any gardening <laughs> I just said don't waste no seeds on Pastor P <laughs> so he's not getting any seeds but his seeds are pistachios because my pastor loved him some pistachios <laughs> okay so what you have here we're going to open this up and it's not going to take long you're going to take out your items here and you want to leave your cotton balls inside you have three cotton balls and a cotton round and I have jump started you with a pinto bean. I want you to know something. Elder King talked about guarding. Did you say that, Elder King? I just want you to know it's this. Mm -hmm. But he, yes, but you talked about guarding, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Guard, like guard your anointing, guard your, yeah, guard it. Well, let me tell you something. He said guard it because all seeds don't make it, y'all. Can I just give you the gory truth? It's planted sporadically, but some fall on good ground. Some fall on stony ground. Some fall among the thorns. And some, the birds come take away. But some just don't have the right environment to make it. And let me show you what I mean. On August the 11th, I jump-started you with a um, pinto bean, and I'll pass it around. But I put some pinto beans in here with a few drops of water because beans germinate and the word of God must not just get in our heads today and just be there. We need to germinate, which means we need to water. We need to let it sit. You see a time clock. I mean, a, a, a sand, sand um, type of clock over here because see, as long as the seed, as long as the earth remain, there will be what? See time and harvest. Time is in there. I believe Ella King talked about when you got to wait. See time and then see time and harvest. You can put that as a, a, um, a, a one word, see time, or you can put it as two words, see time and harvest. So a gardener won't just say, okay, I put it in the ground, now give it to me. No, a gardener needs to deal with time, which brings about patience. And I am one, sometimes they don't have the patience. El Richardson Sr. told me when the wheat and the tear grow together, the Lord of the harvest wanted to um, do the separating because the tear actually supports the wheat. Wheat is, can be flimsy and they can look quite alike, the tear and the wheat. But sometimes you need that little rough stuff to help you stay strong until you're ready. And the tear that grow right along with the wheat is helping the wheat to stay put. Sometimes the problems and the challenges come along and they make us pray and they make us fast and they keep us humble from thinking we all that in a bag of chips. No, God, I need you because they bother me. 
I need you because this is in my face. I need you because this is happening. Guess what? That ugly is like tear, especially when they all up in your face. Shout more than you. Mm -hmm. Can prophesy and speak in tongue too because it's tear. But if you know the difference because you got the Lord of the harvest in you, you don't try to pull it up. It didn't just say they're going to be there. It said it's going to grow together. So guess what? While the weed is growing a little flimsy as it is naturally, the tear supports it and keep it in place until it's ripe and ready. So don't knock your tears and don't knock what's going on under the dirt. That stuff we don't want to deal with because it's for our good. The plans. It's for you to not just be there getting the nutrients from the dirt, but to stand. Oh. Amen? So I just want to put that plug in there. Time is a part of it. So with that, I, I had all of these. I put them all in there at the same time, August the 11th. This was the lima beans that didn't make it. I had these for years from years ago anyway. And I'm just going to tell you the truth. They worked before. Some from this bunch worked before. But this bunch just sat around. They were all lima beans. But they did nothing. They just sat. And did nothing. So I pulled them out because I knew they were lima beans. And I'm going to use them for the activity. Put them in there like I did the rest did not produce. They were dried up. A lot of people say, you know, I've been saved for years. I've been in the way. I'm just giving y'all the truth. All seeds don't make it. All beans don't make it. Temperature the same. In the same sunlight. Sitting on the same table. <laughs> Got the same time. I'm watching all of it. And these were some big old fat pretty ones. And let me tell you, they stink. That's why I got them real zipped. Sin stink. It stinks in God's nostrils. Y'all don't know. I know. Everybody don't know everybody's business. But guess who does? We don't want to be in the way. Say fat and holy, and I'm in the way because I got my way good for nothing, maybe fertilizing, <laughs> but I don't know. But they smell so bad. I just wanted you to know oh, don't make it, it's real. Another kind, same sunlight, same amount of water, same kind. Same process. Everybody can't take what everybody take. But let me tell you all about these little small pinto beans. Y'all already know about my, my unattended potatoes. This is a product from the potatoes I just tossed aside and forgot all about. Have you ever felt like somebody just, just dismissed you and forgot all about the value you have? The value what you have to offer? Well, I could have ate it. Could have made some french fries or something, but I put them on what to the side because Hanukkah was over. Forgot I had them. My assistant said, put them in the ground. More came. But I heard her, and I was, though I was the lead teacher, I was humble enough to say, okay, because you got an idea. Let me do it. Raw forth. We got to have an ear to hear. Then, now here, I put this, I did the same thing with some pinto beans. Same time frame, same sunlight, same amount of water on some paper towel and cotton. And these pinto beans came forth. You see root, you see bean. You see some of the inside based on what you see up there because they're healthy. And they were offered the same thing. You got Naomi offering Ruth and Orpah the same word, the same teaching. 
but you always have somebody that will and somebody that will not. It's the way it is. So I want you to take one of these. We're going to pass it. Take one of these beans. You can take one that looks a little more uh, ready. You can take one that need a little more help. And I want you to put it in your passing, put it in your Ziploc bag. It's gonna, we, can, we have enough for everybody to get at least one. Pick whichever one you want. Uh, yeah, it's ready. You can take one. Just take one because, hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, just the uh, cotton and the bag. Nothing else in there yet. We'll give, I'll tell you about that later. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to take one bean, put it in here. Okay. And after you take one bean, put it in there, because I jump started you. Uh huh. She's pa they're passing like communion. <laughs> you know, old fashioned communion. <laughs> okay. And they got to get up here too. Here, uh, Lady P, here, you can use another plate so we can pass. They can put some on there and we get some to them. Okay. Now, when you put it in your bag, I want you to take your dropper. You have a water dropper. You're going to put your bag down, open up your water dropper, take a fruit drops and moisten your cotton balls. Take a fruit drops of water and moisten your cotton balls. Make sure your bean is laying quietly on the cotton ball. You see how I said quietly? I'm only talking to kids, it's loud, noisy. <laughs> quietly on your cotton ball. As if it's going to bed. As if it's resting. Okay? And they're coming, they're coming around. Lady P is bringing you yours. Yeah, a couple of drops. Just make sure, make sure you moisten your cotton ball. You can moisten all of them. Yeah, yeah, even the pad too. But you don't want to drench it. You just want to moisten it. Because remember, Elder King told us that the greenhouse is the right temperature for germination. The greenhouse will help it to germinate. And I'm what you see is a witness that all I did was put the, be the pinto bean on the cotton with a couple of drops of water. And you see it has already started. And I just simply closed the plastic bag. Because it doesn't need a lot. The bag is going to, um, as, as it opens and grows more, it's going to produce some sweat, some moisture of its own. Because God is going to give what? The increase. One plant, one water. God will give increase. You can check it. Now, I want you to write this date on later. Yes. Hmm? Go ahead. Yes, uh -huh. just, okay, make sure you have your cotton, not drenched, but nice and moist and laid in your seat on there. Make sure you write today's date on it. It is a pinto bean and check it. If you see it's dry, you can give it some more drops and I want you to check back on it later on. It, yeah, let it lay on the cotton because the cotton is working like soil. And the whole process is like the greenhouse that Elder King was talking about is going to give the right temperature for that seed. And you see it already has started production because all of those were healthy. Okay. Now, I, I want you to take that with you and monitor it and see what changes you see. Because though it's a seed, though it's a bean, it is something you want to take note of and say, Lord, what you put in me, it may seem small. It may seem like it's not doing anything at all. But God, it's you that bring forth. 
And I want to bring forth what pleases you. So just this is just an idea of what can be and keep an eye on it and see what it does for you. I also added for uh, you may, uh, this is for home. You have a starter, little soil, healthy potted soil. And you all have seeds. You can look and trade if you like, but you all have seeds that you may start. Some nice, healthy. Uh, no, Sister Jocelyn, she 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 can tell y'all about healthy. I'm always using Jocelyn. Anyway, vegetables, fruits and vegetable, because we do want to just look at the process and think of our lives and our ministries, ministries. Not just saved, I'm saved. That means I got my seed in my hand. But if I'm not doing anything with my salvation, if not, if I'm not sharing the gospel, if I'm not causing somebody else to leave the world and come to Christ, I'm just holding seeds. And we don't want to do that. So you have soil, physical soil. You have a nice container that's earth um, friendly because when you do start getting a plant, you can put it in the earth and this will dissolve and not hurt the earth. Okay. So we have the kind that you can just sit in the ground and yes. I, I'm going to tell you my godmother, some of you know, my godmother had the green, a green thumb. Mine do too, but my mama planted some greens and I tended to them and I was good with it. And it encouraged me to plant some cucumbers. And I had a whole vine of cucumbers in my backyard. And I ate, and then I had some tomatoes too and some lettuce. And let me tell y'all, I ate up my whole garden and didn't plant anything else. Let's not be like that. Okay, don't just eat it up. <laughs> say, what did you say? Eat the watermelon, eat the meat, preserve the Mine, save, the seed. save the seed for planting time. So I just take the garden up and I didn't plant anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to have this program here to just jumpstart me because I have seeds too. And if you look at the seeds, hopefully you like the seeds that's in your bag, but you can also trade if you like to. Okay. And that is the seed. I wanted you to have that uh, diagram. There's yes. It's mine, no, this is a radish. I don't have any tomatoes. Oh, it's so strange. I don't have any tomatoes. This is a radish. Mm -hmm. But if you see somebody with a type of vegetable that you like, you can talk and trade. That's a part of fellowship. <laughs> Anybody want to trade? I have corn seeds. <laughs> uh, and I, oh, okay. I had an extra one. Is that it? No, I took it out. Okay. And don't forget, they have things which you call like uh, flower food and plant food. That's just that extra, you know, what we call plant food and bring it home, ap apply it. Prayer, you know, plant food, you know, fasting, plant food, you know, revivals, consecration, that all that helps make the plant healthy to bring forth not just fruit, but healthy fruit, and that it re will remain. Um, last part, and then I'm going to ask Elder King to come forth, and then we are close with prayer. Um, the three parts, I had it somewhere. Okay, it says here, the seed develops into three distinctive parts. The coat, the seed coat, that's that's the food storage, and the embryo. Ah, Sister D. I mean, Sister uh, Barbara. The seed coat surrounds the seed. The food storage feeds the embryo. And the embryo develops into a plant. The embryo is a living it is the living miniature plant within the seed. It contains the radical, which develops into the root. The plumule, which develops into the shoot. 
and the cot cotodilons. Did I say that right? Daily dons. Cotyledon, thank you, Dean. Those are the, the seeds that the seed leaves that produce the embryo with its initial food supply. The endosperm is a nutrient tissue that surrounds and nourishes the embryo. It provides the embryo with carbohydrates, proteins, and lip lipids to support germination and early growth. That's what you have in your bag that starts out. The seed coat is the testile. Elder King told us about that. The seed coat is the protective outer layer of the seed. It shields the seed. And we want to make sure that we have all our parts in place, operating so that we may produce not just more seed, but are not just fruit, but healthy fruit. Amen? healthy and you take that same concept to your own life walk with the lord and your ministries that god have called you to and i hope this was a blessing to you i hope and i know it's bigger than this it's more to it than this because each part of the seed is a message in itself but the result is new birth new birth that's why it's looking like a baby and we've been born again to bring forth more of our own kind what kind because <laughs> i'm telling you seeds produce more of their own kind so we want to make sure our kind is the kind that's pleasing to the lord since we're going to produce somewhere or another more of our own kind we, we want to speak positive um, could you go to the next slide? Because this is where the prayer come in, because there's more to it, and we'll be back um, Sunday. Um, the slide after that. When uh, Dean told me that somebody let her know every deed, what would you say, Dean? Every deed is a seed. When you're using your words, Lady Peace, favorite scripture, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer why because we plant seeds mentally emotionally physically yeah we can when we put forth what's good for our body spiritually financially some people got tired of hearing plant a seed we're gonna get seed money oh every time you hear a seed you think of money but no it's bigger than that Observe, and then I had you to observe your lima bean. We saw some didn't make it. And I want you to take it home and continue to observe it. But don't just look at that. Look at your, within yourself that you may grow by the word of God. Amen? We're going to now ask Elder King to give us whatever the Lord gives you. We still want to be the saints of God that keep that, that remain in us, contending for the faith. That was once delivered to the saints. Amen. Then we will close with prayer. The blessings are fruitful blessings. And praise the Lord once again, everybody. Amen. We thank God for uh, this day one session. Amen. Of the Seedology Conference. And just getting back to that word, Seedology. Study of the seed. Uh makes sense to just say that the more you study something, the more you know about it. And if the seed is the word of God and the word of God is God, then the more you study his word, the more you know about him. And I've found in my little lifetime that the more I came to know him, the more I wanted to know about him. So I end up continuing in his word. And in doing so, I become even more of a disciple. In knowing him, I come to know the truth, and that truth makes me free in him. And so we heard from uh, Dr. Smith, 
Amen. And we see how the seed, amen, Jesus himself came down through those 40 and two generations. And I would often say how people think that Jesus is holy. He is. But he didn't get here through a holy lineage. He got two prostitutes in his family tree. He got some thieves and robbers, and he got, he got some ugly folk in his family tree. And some of us do too. But that tells me something, that God does not care about where you came from. He cares about where you want to go. And I don't know about you, but I want to go to that city called heaven. Man, some of my members are looking at me like, oh, Lord. Amen. I can't help but whenever I talk about that city called heaven, I just want to have church. Because I want to go. I'm going to go. And this seed that is planted in me is going to help me get there. Amen. And so now Jesus himself proved to be the ultimate sacrifice and the ultimate seed. He was planted, but his job was not done. So he had to get up on that third day and finish what he started. Amen. The seed now resides in us, uh, but the job is not done. Now it's time for us to get up and finish what the Lord has started in us. Amen. We get excited and we get pumped when we hear about what the Lord is going to do for me. Oh. But we forget that every relationship is a two-way street. He is doing his part. The question we face with every decision we make, every thought, every deed, every day, are we doing our part? Because I went, I went there earlier today, and I got to say it again. Seeds can die and become useless. It's because those seeds somehow ended up in the wrong environment, under the wrong temperature and humidity. Amen. I can't go into what I was going, I'm going to say tomorrow, but let me, let me just say it real simple. We have a whole lot more power and control over the effect the word has in us than we think. We have way more power and authority. Over, the first thing, I, one of the things, young, growing up in church, I always say third generation apostolic. I learned that the God we serve, he's a gentleman. He never forces his way on you or in you. If you want him, you got him. If you reject him, he'll still be standing there at the door knocking, but he'll go to somebody else's house to come in and sup with them, waiting for you to figure yourself out. <laughs> so we see here that when it's all said and done, the word of God does exactly what you, there used to be an old song back in our day, you know, that kind of thing. Old song, he'll be to you just what you let him be. The word of God will be in your life just what you let it be. The Holy Ghost will teach you and lead you to all truth if you let it do its job. And I want to remind everybody, you can't blame it on the devil. Get that out your mind. Flip Wilson got us twisted, those of you who are old enough. Oh, the devil made me do it. He, he didn't make us do anything. We, we were tempted. We chose to follow that temptation, and we did wrong. 
after we got the Holy Ghost that happened. Am I fussing too much? Or am I telling the truth for myself and the rest of y'all? <laughs> so ultimately, as we come back tomorrow, we're going to be uh, talking about the seed some more. And I'm praying that you all can make it back because we really need to study the seed and understand the power the seed has given us to not only bear the fruit, and I'll give you a little, a little sample on my, my part. You know how it talks about he's the true vine and we are his branches. Have you ever seen branches that didn't have leaves or any fruit on them? But, but the branches are connected to the true vine. What happened? Look, look, where is it? Tree right out there. Imagine there were no leaves on that tree. What happened? Vine right there. That thing just as brown and dead as all good out. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk about you. I just realized I'll, I'll come by this week and me and brother Everett to clean it off for you if you want. Oh Lord. I always I always end up in trouble. That's y'all should be praying for me. I wouldn't be in so much trouble all the time. Amen. <laughs> I really didn't mean it. But honestly, just to use it as an example, as an analogy, something happened. Because there's a couple of spots where I can see some green leaves, but the majority of it is not the case. Something, something happened. The seed was planted, but we did something that would not allow the true vine, which always supplies everything you need, we did not allow the true vine to bring or impart what we needed in order for our branch, us, to produce the fruit of the spirit that he called us to produce. I got to stop there because I'll end up doing the whole thing. Amen. But let's all stand. Amen. Let's all stand. Come back tomorrow if you can. I pray that everything that's been said by our Dr. Smith, our Dean Jordan, amen, and others, we pray that it blessed you in a mighty way and that it makes you want to come back because God's not done. Amen. Bishop and Pastor Lancaster. Amen. They, uh, I was instructed to ask you if you want like to have remarks, and we thank you for your remarks. Amen. <laughs> Pastor? And all the time, God is good. Amen. At this point, we're going to just ask everyone, if you would, uh, just come across, you know, this side first, my, my side here, this side first, just come across here that you might be anointed. And then we're going to close out in prayer. Amen. Oh, she's coming to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't help myself. Amen. One of these days I'm going to get it all together. I got most of it together. It took me a while, but I'm gonna get the rest done. And 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 y'all won't be laughing at me so much. <laughs> Amen. If ever you see me, know this. I enjoy the Lord. Amen. If I can't enjoy the Lord amongst those in whom I have the inheritance, I'm in bad shape. So when I come to the house of God, I'm looking to have a good time. I'm gonna laugh, I'm gonna cry. I'm going to shout, I'm going to run, I'm going to do whatever. Amen. This is where we celebrate Jesus together. Amen. Even if your head is hung down, pat your toes, do something, 
and God will lift your head up. Amen. Got to start somewhere. Amen. If it's just a small hallelujah that only Jesus can hear, you just start saying hallelujah. Whatever you're going through, you got to start somewhere to get up out of whatever the enemy thinks he's got you buried in. And there's no better place to start your deliverance than with a praise. I said I was going to be hanged, but I'm done now. Amen. Your best, your best, your best deliverance comes with a praise. You praise God anyhow. Come on, just start opening your, opening your mouth and give God your best praise. As tired as you may be. As much as you're going through, whatever's going on, you start this off with your best praise. But there's victory in that praise. There's power in that praise. Whatever you need from the Lord, it's in your praise. Open your mouth and receive of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Let's make it real clear. We done been through too much already. We still got a little something to deal with coming down the road. But we don't have to go through it by ourselves. The Lord can prepare us and strengthen us and get us ready for the next battle in our lives. Knowing that he who is with us is more than the world against us. You might as well give God an in advance praise because victory belongs. Victory belongs to the house of God. Don't look outside these walls. Don't look at what's going on in the world. Amen. Just because they seem to prosper in their way. They will soon be cut off and cast out like the grass. But for those who stand on the word of God, for those whom the seed has been planted, for those who are willing to endure as good soldiers, hold on, hold on, hold on. Your help, your healing, your deliverance, your answer, your God, he's on the way. He's on the way. The word says, he's on the way. The promise is, he's on the way. Don't let the devil deceive you and cause you to lose faith now. Hold to God's unchanging hand. He will stop by. He will come see about his own. He will. Glory, high and most send and the most shut up. High and the most sheer. At some point, we got to realize that as the people of God, the word, hallelujah, applies to every situation. He said that many would be the afflictions of the righteous, but God will. Deliver us out of them all. So why am I cast down on my soul? Why art thou in disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. He will stop by. For it is not God's will for his people to be at lack or at loss. We are delivered. We are free. We are victorious. We are what God says we are as the people of God because we belong to him. My heavenly father, he's watching over us. Seas billows roll. I'm not worried because God is watching over my soul. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. 
Pastor Perkins, pray us out, brother. Glory to God. Hold on, saints. Glory to God. Hold on, saints. Hold on. Glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Lord God, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for the entire service today, O oh Lord. We thank you for seedology, O oh Lord. Oh God, even ones that didn't understand what seedology even mean, O oh Lord. But oh God, we know that you are the seed, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. And without you, we can do nothing, O oh Lord. Lord God, we ask, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, continue to strengthen us, encourage our hearts and our minds, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Continue, O oh Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to take the seed, O oh Lord, that you're giving us, O oh Lord, and continue to let it grow, O oh Lord. Grow the fruits that you are calling us to be, O oh Lord. Every trait that's in your life, O oh Lord, help it to grow like never before, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us to be the tree that you call, hallelujah, that you want us to be. Help us to be the light child of us, of the world, O oh Lord, that you are calling us to be. Help each and every one of us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us. Guide us. Lead us. Help us to be all that you call us to be. If we ever give you honor, we ever give you the glory, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.